Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. Cedric here in Antwerp. Today we are moving over to Spain once more to talk about Cruz Campo. And this is gonna sound more like a business lecture uh, than a beer talk, but bear with me. In 1902, two brothers, Tomás and Roberto Osborne, wanted to make refreshing beers to fit the local climate. They were fans of the Czech Pilsner beers, uh, which they've tasted on their travels through Germany and Belgium, and found out that the water in Sevilla had a similar composition to that of Pilsen. After a short search, in 1903 they found a location near the Cruz del Campo Shrine, a large cross, uh, which kindly gave its name to the beer. Cruz del Campo, Cruz Campo. Of course, the water story is probably a sales pitch, and it is much more likely that they stranded in Sevilla because it already had a large number of wineries, and the wealthy Osborne family was already infested uh, in winemaking. So, with financial help of Banco Hispano Americano, the Osborne brothers took on two German engineers, Wilhelm Rist and Friedrich Stolze, to build a contemporary brewery. It got finished in 1904, and just before Christmas Eve, the first Cruz Campo beer was released on December 22nd. A bit later, in 1906, the brothers registered their company as R&T Osborne. But after 10 years, Thomas found that his heart lied with wine, so he left the brewery to focus solely on winemaking with the family company. Roberto remained the sole manager of Cruz Campo until he passed away in 1937, triggering the bank to take the company public. During that time, uh, Roberto only focused on the local Andalusian market and the Spanish colonies in Africa. The company grew and grew and by the 20s and 30s they already had over 100 employees be it in production or delivering beer with horse-drawn carriages, etc. But unfortunately, after the Civil War, the brewery had to close down for two years due to lack of raw materials. And just like in the Guinness story, and I'll post the link here, um, the employees were still partially paid. After those two years, uh, tourism boomed in Spain, and demand for decent beer rose along, so they reopened and they grew even further. During the 60s, uh, Cruz Campo slowly became a group rather than a single company. The American Schlitz Brewing Co. already had a factory in Barcelona and was looking to expand, so they formed a joint venture called Cervecerias Asociadas S.A. in 1965. And in 1969, they acquired Henniger España, a subsidiary of the German Henniger Brewery based in Madrid. The Cruz Campo group was born and frankly it was unstoppable. Now, although Cruz Campo was now a business rather than a brewery, they kept hiring master brewers and were full of innovation. For example, in 1926 they adopted a new logo with King Jambrinus as a symbol and in 1928 they started their own local hop farms. During the 40s and 50s, they replaced their entire logistics park by brand new motorized delivery trucks. So, farewell horse-drawn carriages. In the 60s, they were the first brewery to switch from wooden barrels to aluminum or steel, and they expanded their agricultural assets by farming and malting their own grains in Sevilla, Granada, Extremadura, and so on. In 1976, they were also among the first breweries to introduce non-alcoholic beer to the market. Now, over time, more and more expansions were inevitable, and they kept acquiring breweries all over. The bigger the better, and in 1975 they bought uh, Industrial Cervecera Sevillana. In 1985, Cervezas El Alcazar. In Jaén uh, followed. In 1986 they took over Juan y Teodoro Kutz in San Sebastian in Basque Country all the way up north. And by the late 80s they controlled nearly 20% of the Spanish beer market with competitors like San Miguel, Estrella, Amstel, 
Um, so they were quite a big player. As usual, companies with growing rates like these draw attention and are often subject to takeovers, sometimes even hostile takeovers. This story is not different at all. And in January of 1991, the Irish giant Guinness placed a bit of, whew, that's a lot of zeros, 98 billion Spanish pesetas, which accounts uh, yeah, to about 588 million euros 30 years ago. But of course they didn't stop there. And in June of that same year, they bought uh, Union, the Spanish subsidiary of the Danish United, which came with three more factories in Valencia, Malaga and Bilbao. With these breweries came the guarantee that they could brew Carlsberg and Skull locally, securing another 6% of the market share. In 1993, the parent company finally decided to unify all these smaller breweries that formed Cruzcampo by then in a proper new group called the Grupo Cruzcampo SA and put it in the British Diego portfolio, of which we've already heard. They amounted to 25% of all Spanish beer sales and forming one solid group meant that they could simplify and streamline logistics and a bunch of systems while maintaining presence throughout the entire country. Like I said, it's a business lesson. Despite being a huge company, Cruz Campo did maintain a social character, for example, uh, by farming locally and paying fair prices. And in 1995, they started the Cruz Campo Foundation with the goal of uh, promoting development of young talent, culture and hospitality in Andalusia, where it all started. In 1999, another player on the Spanish market suffered a huge blow when Heineken Spain was actually forced by the Council of Ministers to sell and abandon several parts of their company. They gained a lot of money, but lost a lot of valuable assets in this way. And merely one year later, Heineken International knocked on the door of Diego um, to take Grupo Cruzcampo off their hands. This time for a whopping 145 billion Spanish pesetas, which was roughly 50% more than they paid themselves. Less than 10 years before. So Heineken already had a majority of El Aguila, which we'll talk about in a later video, and merged both. So after merging the companies and changing the name back to Heineken España, um, they kept a large part of the HQ in Sevilla, but the operations HQ was moved to the old El Aguila offices in Madrid, which is much more central. In the meantime, Cruz Campo was still going strong. 20 years ago, they were in the top 10 of best-selling beers in Europe, not only Spain, all of Europe. They exported to over 30 countries and had more than 700 employees. Therefore, in 2008, they built an entire new brewery in Sevilla, where it all started in 1904. The old brew house was preserved and the old factory buildings now house a hospitality school and the Cruz Campo Foundation. So, if you ever get the chance, uh, yeah, go visit it. You can still see the old machinery, the old brew house. And yeah, go out, find yourself a Cruz Campo beer and, and try it out for yourself. We'll be trying several more in the following weeks. So again, as usual, if you guys like this video, let me know, hit the thumbs up. If you have any questions, remarks or whatever, put them down in the comments. And if you want to see more, subscribe, hit the bell icon and you'll be notified whenever I upload something. And if you want to support this channel, just share one of my videos. And yeah, I'll get back to you in the next video, which probably will be a brew review. Cheers, you guys.